Hello and good morning, everyone. Um, we hope you are either safely where you need to be on this snowy morning or joining us um, from the comfort of your own home. My name is Julie Demers. I'm the um, executive director of the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. I have a very limited role today, though it is a very exciting one. I have the honor of introducing um, our speaker today and also Shannon Herman from Alexander Technology Group, who will be serving as the host, monitoring the questions that you have in chat and engaging in some really fun um, dialogue with Max Ahmad, owner of Blue Sky Transportation and CEO of RideLinks. So thank you again for joining us. Um, and Shannon, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Julie. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, good morning and welcome to the first annual Pathways to Tech, a career conversation. My name is Shannon Herman, and I'm a senior recruiter for Alexander Technology Group. I'm excited to be hosting today's event on behalf of the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. If you're not familiar with the New Hampshire Tech Alliance, it is a statewide technology association dedicated to supporting companies and building partnerships and also providing educational opportunities. Over the last year, we've watched the pandemic make changes throughout our lives, but perhaps most importantly in our schools. We have watched teachers and educators embrace technology and learn new ways to work together. Through this event today, the New Hampshire Tech Alliance hopes to give back to these students by providing opportunities to learn about career paths in technology and also entrepreneurship. Over the next 30 minutes, you'll hear from Max Ahmad and learn a little bit more about entrepreneurship, specifically launching his most recent company, RideLinks. You will also have the opportunity to ask many questions, so please use the chat feature, and I'll read those chats throughout today's event. At this point, I'd like to welcome Max um, to the stage. Thanks, Max. Thank you so much, Shannon, and thank you for having me take the uh, New Hampshire Tech Line. And I'm so be so happy to be here with you guys and uh, see what we can talk about today about my passion and my new creation called Right Links. So, uh, my, like you say, my name is Max Ahmad, and I'm I, li I live in Manchester, New Hampshire. I own a Blue Sky Transportation Company for the last 17 to 18 years. And uh, it, it was, uh, I, I bought a company in 2004. And the 2017, uh, when Uber and Lyft came in and they tried to hurt my company, the, our business in transportation industry. So I did not complain about it. I did something about it. So uh, I created Right Links. So today I want to talk to you about RideLinks. What is RideLinks? Is RideLinks is a, a it's a transportation app that I created for a limousine company, and our black car limousine companies are to the countrywide, and it's allowed drivers to make their price and drive to. Uh, 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 so rider when the rider look for the rides and they see uh, what the driver's charging the price and what kind of car they're driving and what do they look like and it's, it's a, it's a, so it's all about choices for the riders and it's all about choices for the drivers so this is what ride links is so uh you know it's 2004 when i bought this company and i used to work in a factory and I always wanted to know what my passion is. What is what do what do I want to do? So, uh, and uh, I didn't have any money to buy a, a business in 2004, but I bought it, uh, Blue Sky Transportation, and uh, that's how I started my journey with uh, with Blue Sky. So all of the all of you kids that uh, today I'm talking to, I know we have a high school kids and a college kids. And uh, we all, the things we want to know, what do, what do you guys want to do? And uh, my, my thing is to you guys, to so find your passion. Find the thing that you like to do. Find the thing that makes you happy. You know, and uh, failure is, a, is not a, it's like, a, it's, it's okay to, uh, in life, you, you do something and you don't get succeed. But that's okay. But that will give you. Uh, you learn from it. So I, I learned from my mistakes. Uh, so I, to me is in life, either you win or you learn, you never lose. So uh, that's what I do. So uh, to, uh, 
finding your passion is uh, see what you like to do. Like I said, you know, what do you like to do? And uh, so many people out there that I know that they have a passion, they have a, they have uh, ideas. They don't. They have like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. But then it comes to uh, execute them, and uh, they don't know how to do it. And that's what I see a lot of people uh, in my in my field that I met so many people that they don't get succeed. They don't get to do what they wanted to do. So, uh, so that's what I came in. You know, I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna. Uh, so this so this is what my passion is. So I found my passion that. I love helping people. I love helping uh, businesses because uh, developing businesses, that's what I want to do. And that's how I start, you know, helping other companies and other uh, friends or family members that they come to me and they want to talk to me. And of course, that's what I do. I like to help them out. And uh, so any of you guys uh, wants to talk to me on uh, separately or you want to ask me any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'm gonna ink link and ask me any question you like. And uh, so uh, of course, uh, uh, I'll be more than happy. Uh, actually it's my passion. It's my, I would love to help you to find you, what do you want to do? So, Max, I have a question um, from the audience of, can you share with us an example of a mistake you've learned from? Sure. My, my mistake was uh, I listened to too many peoples. And uh, uh, so everybody give me advices. Or everybody said, when it's time to execute them, nobody's around me, nobody next to me. So I was by myself. So I decided to say, you know what? I'm not going to listen to anybody. So I, when I was starting Rye Links and everybody, or even my family members, they're like, oh, it's not going to happen. You, uh, you can't do it. Oh, it's not going to, uh, there's no way it's going to happen. It. There's no way you can compare yourself with Uber. There's no way. There's no way. Everybody's like, it's impossible for you to do it. I said, you know what? Either I'm, I'm going to do it and I know either I'm going to win or I'm going to learn. So. I did learn, and of course I win. Right now, uh, Rye Links is in 17 states, and I have over 500 drivers, and over 500 riders signed up uh, uh, in 17 states in the, in the United States. So I, I made that happen, because I believe it in myself, and I, then I stopped listening to people. I, I, I'd listen to myself, I said, you know what? I know that I'm, I, I dream big, and I'm gonna make that happen. And there is no small dreams, it's all with a big dream. That's awesome. Congratulations. And 17 you. states. Um, that Well done. Now, starting a business can be really frustrating. So how do you help stay motivated when, you know, creating something new? Think positive. Always, when you think positive, everything's going to You're going to meet the right people in your life. When you focus something on that, you know, this is what you want to do. You're going to, you're going to meet the right people in your life. And, uh, Honestly, to me, is uh, people saying, "Oh, we need money. We need money." You don't. Uh, to me, my personal opinion, you don't need the money to start a business. If you you get the idea that you want to do, you meet the right people. A person like myself, I would love to help people, and I will show you how to make business without any money. I've, of course, you know you got you're gonna meet people like who love to who love your ideas and who love to see if you if you have a passion about it. They will invest their money with you, because you know, because everybody want to see people to be. Everybody want to uh, uh, invest money in, in business. Like I, I become after that, I become investor myself. I invest money in in uh, people who wants to do business, and I, because that's what I do. You know, I like it. So it's uh, when when you do business, uh, and uh, it's not an easy journey. Is, is, if somebody tells you that, hey, you know, just open a business and you'll be a millionaire tomorrow, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's not. It's a long journey and it takes a lot of your effort. It takes a lot of hard work. And it's, it's, a, it's your commitment that you, you want to do. It's, it takes so much commitment to do that. And you, you, stay, you have different path, different uh, route than anybody else. You're in a different race now. So... You got to work harder than anybody to achieve that business goal that you want to do. So, excellent, thank you. Um, as far as you know, what 
students could be doing now. So what would advice would you give a high school student to prepare for um, a career in entrepreneurship or starting a business young? To me, honestly, to me, it, there is no there is no age for uh, starting a business. There's no young age or old age. Any age can be starting a business. And uh, you can be starting business uh, uh, right now. If you like to do something like my daughter, she is a, a four, she's 15 year old and uh, she started her a company when she was 13. Uh, it's called Yums. She baked cakes and uh, and cupcakes and stuff. And she started because that's her passion. She liked to do. And of course, anytime you can start business, you don't need uh, to be like, oh, I, I got to get my, uh, my education or I got to get this degree to, to start my business. No, you don't need a degree or you don't need a, all this education to start a business. Of, I, of course, biz, uh, education is very important for you to communicate with, uh, with when you go into business. It's, it's, it's great to have knowledge. Uh, on my end, I, I did not go to college. I did, I'm a high school graduate, and uh, that's why, uh, because uh, I cannot blame on anybody. First of all, uh, I, will, I, I, I advise to all my students, all the students that never blame on anybody. Always blame, if something goes wrong, blame on yourself. So it's, it's nobody's fault, it's yours, if, you, you know, if you're not doing anything about it. So I cannot sit here and say, oh, because I didn't go to college because of my parents, so, you know, they didn't export me. And they, no, it's not that. If I wanted to go to college, I, but college was not for me. So I was, like I said, I was born to be an uh, entrepreneur. I like, so that's what I, I, I found my passion in 2004 that I, I'm, I can't work for anybody. I, I just got to have my own business. So, the, so the so the youngster uh, out there, uh, like you said, whenever they want to start business, and uh, there's no age for that, you can start anytime. And if you have a uh, 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 talk to your parents about it, you know, if you're not high school kids, uh, talk to your parents. This is what I want to do. This is what I like to do. And uh, honestly, I see so many people. They want to go. They want to be a doctor, but they're really a good chef. You know, but they want to be a chef, but they're really good engineers. So find your passion. What do you like to do? What makes you happy? And it, where can you find that? Uh, you you doing your passion and you love what you do. And you, on top of that, you're making money. This is the beautiful thing. You can do that if you can. I think you've touched a little bit upon finding passion, but what hard skills or soft skills should someone have in the field of entrepreneurship? Well, hard uh well, there is no, uh, first of all, there is no uh, soft or hard skill to me. To me is, a, you know, like, let's see, uh, if I want to start a, a, a business, any business I want to start, you know, it, it just, uh, well, this, you know, this is what I, this is, uh, how do I answer that to you? Like, so when I, when I, uh, when I do my business out there and uh, I found, the, the, the what's the best way I can uh, create that? So obviously, you know, soft way is a, uh, how, how am I gonna get to the end of the line? And, and hard way is, uh, of course, the people like they, they you know, which they understand this as a financial, you know, that's a hard, hard one is. And, uh, but, you know, so this is a hard part is uh, to, to finding financing and to do it because a lot of people get scared of that oh man I, I can't do it because it's gonna cost me so much money it's gonna cost me so much money but always there's always a way so yeah uh, this is my answer to you right now maybe you could talk through a little bit about that step so when you came up with the idea for ride links um mm -hmm. how much did you do up front how much was conceptual when you went to get some financing or investors uh, well, when I bought this company, uh, when I started this uh, uh, Ride Links, I, I went to all those uh, uh, in, uh, developer in the United States, and it was way too expensive for me to do it. There's no way. Uh, but the thing is, my wife believed in me so much, and she said, uh, "If I have to sell my house, our house, sell it." I said, "No, it's not gonna. It's not, I'm not gonna do that because I." Because I teach people that you don't need a money to start a business. So why can I use that term to myself? So uh, 
the money that I was paying in the United States was way too expensive. So then I found my uh, sources are, are, are overseas. And uh, I had an, uh, my own saving money that I had. I used that money to uh, create Rye Links. I did not go to any investors. I did not go to anybody to be become part of that. So that's why, I mean, I, right now, uh, I 100% is me. So I, I, I got all the funding. Everything was on me. I used my credit card. Uh, uh, I took money out of my credit card for 0% interest for 18 months. I know that I have 18 months to go. And uh, so I took the money and I paid off. And uh, when the end of the, when I Rylands got completed, I had my house, I had equity. And then I refinanced my house. I get all the money and I pay off my credit card debt. So now I'm debt free for my credit card and my house is still there and I have a right links. Excellent. What, um, what advantages do you see to owning your own company versus having investors? Uh, well, you know, you, you be your own boss and, uh, it, it's a great, it's a great, uh, what's called a uh, responsibility on me, on you, when you own a business, because everybody look up to you and you look up to everybody else. Everybody's that, uh, you know, bringing your company all the way top and you gotta be like uh, on top of everybody. You gotta be like, uh, I want to be a two step ahead of everybody, all my, my employees, because, you know, I'm creating something for them so they can have jobs and they can work for us and, uh, do the best they can and it's just a freedom that I, I a lot of people say you don't have a freedom when you don't or you're you own a business no when you have a right team you will get a freedom when you have the right people to work for you you will get a freedom and uh, you enjoy more life and uh, so you don't have to answer to anybody you answer yourself and uh, if something goes wrong you don't blame on anybody you blame on yourself and uh, so Owning a company is a great, great feeling for me because I personally, I don't like to, I can't, I don't, I don't like to work for anybody. And uh, uh, it's a great thing that uh, you have your own company and you be on your boss. Now, um, you know, you've, you've said that you've kind of run a path to entrepreneurship where uh, you've done other things. How were maybe some of your early jobs a impact on what you're doing today? Okay. Well, uh, I lived in New York for nine years. I, I used, well, like when I came to America, United States, from Pakistan, I was uh, 16 years old, and uh, I couldn't speak a word of English. I couldn't. I never sit in a car, and. Uh, uh, that was my first time I, when I came to America and I, I sit in a car first time and I went to school and that's how I learned ABC and one, two, three from ESL Central High School. And 1990, I was uh, in New York. I was teaching people how to drive in New York City. And that's how I started my journey working as a, as a driver instructor. In 1999, I moved back to New Hampshire. I worked in a factory called Furtenberg for uh, five and a half years. And nine months later, I become a group leader in my company, in, 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 sorry, in, in Frutenberg. I got a 22 people work under me. And it's like, I was born to be like, I was being a leader I, I, every, every time. I, when I see something, I always wanna make better out of it. What, what can we do to make a better? What can we do to make a better? I always uh, uh, think of that. What, what can I do? So my earlier job before before uh, owning a, a business, I was uh, uh, working in a factory. I worked there for five and a half years, and of course, after nine eleven happened, you know. And uh, I am from Pakistan. I'm a Muslim, and uh, so you know they start looking at me and start treating me differently because you know. So I, I lost my position. They, I was group leader. They, I lost my position, and then they put me uh, to a a normal position where I was making around $18 an hour, and then they bring me down to $12.25 an hour. And I just lost my interest working for somebody. So then 2004, I got an, uh, uh, start working for a limousine company. And then I, I said, okay, I like this business. And uh, the guy, I see this guy wants to sell his company called Blue Sky. And I went over to him and asked him how much you want your company for. And he said, uh, $15,000. I'll sell you the company and, and my bank account i had about 87 dollars 
And that's all I. <laughs> and uh, so my, I said okay. So I, I negotiate with them for eleven thousand three hundred, and he says okay, we're done. And uh, so, how do I start it? I took money from my credit card company. I, I took money from my credit card, and I, I got the money. I bought the business. Within six months, I paid off all my credit card debt. And that's how I start my journey on your business. And yeah. and that I'm sorry, there was a there was a time that I had eleven cars in my company that I had people work for me. And then obviously then 2014 to 17, Uber came in, start taking my business uh, our business away from us. And uh, I was fighting with the state of New Hampshire for uh, uh, for the rights because to me is, uh, you know, I have to pay all the fees, insurance, documents, transponder, all, all kind of fee and regulation. I have to follow the rules and regulation, state and also the airport. And Uber comes in, people start taking their personal car, personal insurance, no permit, n no background check, no criminal record check, and uh, start making money and uh, of course uh, taking doing for a cheaper price so uh, everybody start losing a lot of people that i know they lose their company lose their jobs and they say you know what uh this this, this is not good i said you know what i'm not gonna cry about it i'm gonna do something about it so I, after that i went to uh, a fight with the uh, well unit leader came they interviewed me and they asked me about how do i feel and I'm, I'm glad they asked me how I feel about Uber. So I told them that's what I feel. And then, of course, after that, I went to court. And the court I, before I went to court, they asked me to uh, have at least a minimum 50 drivers for testimony because the way I feel, make sure they feel the same way. So when I went to court, not a one single driver showed up. So we kind of everybody think that you can't fight with Uber. Uber is too big. And uh, so nobody came. So I obviously, I, I didn't win. And I said, okay. So when I came home, so my wife asked me, what are you gonna do? I said, you know, if I cannot beat them, I'm gonna join them. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm gonna create my own app. She said, how are you gonna do that? So that's how I said, this is how I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find the team. I'm gonna find the people who's gonna create the app for me. And I'm gonna make, bring all those drivers who lost their job, I'm gonna bring them back. And I'm going to give them the option to make money. And that's how I start Rylings. That's a really incredible story of how not to feel defeated, right? And to uh, take what's ahead of you and turn it into a positive, not a negative. Yes. What steps did you go through in order to developing the app and, and kind of moving from concept to reality? I know you said you used an outsourced resource, but... Um, what about some of the research or other pieces that went into building this company? Well, I mean, the, the business that I've, I've been in, limousine company, that I already know the business myself because I've been doing it for 17 years. And my number one, uh, as my philosophy, is a customer service. You have to have great customer service. And honestly, uh, the, the, the customers that I have since 2004, they're still traveling with me because they like my attitude, they like my service, and, and become families. So I know the business very well. So for me to, uh, so when I, excuse me, when I see people uh, like out there, you know, uh, like one, uh, a writer calls for a job and for, for, for a ride, you know, they, they, what is the first thing they do? Asking for the price. They want to know how much they cost, you know. So so everything I put in the app, I said, I'm going to trade that. So I'm going to put everything in, in the app. So make it easy for the riders and easier for the drivers to find them. So uh, uh, so that's what I, I put everything in the app to, to uh, make it easy for everybody, everyone. Did you go through many iterations of the app before you found one that you liked and you thought customers were able to use well? No, uh, well, not really. I mean, when we we have, we have the design, we have everything that uh, you know the way all the functions, functionality is going to work, and uh, and uh, I, I was I was I was happy with it. I was okay with that, and we just uh, it, it takes a. 
it took me at least a year and a half to complete that. You know, it's, and after that, June 20, 2019, we launched it. And uh, no, it was, it was easy to use. Uh, people are using it in New York, people are using it in Massachusetts, and it, it, it's fine. It's, it's working great. Have any of the big companies like Ride or Lift, you know, contacted you to no, maybe yet. stop your business or to join? Have you sell your business to them? Oh, not yet, but uh, of course I would like to. Or one day, maybe you know, within five years, when I when I go like uh, nationwide and when people get to know me very well, and of course, if somebody wants to come out and talk to me about it, we'll talk. I, because to me, is I, I don't like to own one business. I like to own many, many businesses. And my biggest passion is, of course, and I love helping people for uh, uh, become, you know, their mentor. And of course, my biggest, uh, the, uh, I, lo I love to be an investor. I love to uh, look at the people' business ideas. I want to see if I something that I really click me that I really I like it, and I want to help them, and I want to invest my money with them, and I want to give them, uh, show them the light that. It is the possible. You can do it, and uh, and I can show them how to do it. And this is my this is what I like to do. I want to be an investor in the future. I want to be one of the Shark Tank. And uh, so I can help uh, many people. I can for business. So it, you know, kind of building upon that. Where where do you see um, your own personal? path over the next five years for well, my personal path in five years is uh hopefully my my goal is to sell my sell right links and uh, if somebody come to me with the right price and uh, so for, for that five five years i want to have at least a million drivers uh, in my company and uh, i have a million over a million riders to use when i get to that point and i will be like uh looking for somebody want to buy me out and when uh, when that happened, and I got a great price, and then I'm going to be, well, it's funny thing you asked because when I came to America, and uh, when I was uh, 16 years old, I always want to own a hotel, and uh, this is my biggest uh, one. Of my dream is out to own a hotel, so I want to buy a hotel, like a five star hotel. What about a hotel? Has always been kind of that goal for you. It, it just to me is it's a great opportunity for business. I think this is the uh, real estate is, is amazing to have business. You know that's uh, like uh, that's number third uh, business in the world, and uh, they will never go out of business. So real estate is a, is another thing that I, I'm really interested in buying a real estate and properties and stuff. And but hotel is like uh, something that I because I see. When I see a great service, a customer service in a hotel, and that admires me so much. And I see a lot of hotels don't, don't have a great service, and I know I can do it better than that. I know I can make it better. And this is something that I, I always wanted to do, own a hotel. So when I, uh, maybe in five years, my goal is to own a hotel. That's awesome. And I think having goals is so important throughout your career. Um, it, you know, starting off from whether you're in high school and thinking through entrepreneurship or uh, all the way through college where maybe you're making something and starting your own business. So, um, you know, definitely appreciate your time today. Of kind course. of in closing, Max, what what advice would you say to to a student right now that has a good idea? What should be their first step and, you know, how should they approach what, you know, what the path should look like for them? Well, to me, if you guys get a great, I believe everybody get an idea, you know, and uh, try not to share your too many ideas with people. So everybody get a, you know, their own ideas to giving you ideas. So, uh, you know, either they're going to start telling you like, oh, it's not going to happen. It's not. So talk to people you really trust. Talk to your parents. First of all, talk to your, 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 the, your parents is the, is the best guardians you can get in my in my opinion talk to your parents say this is my idea they want to do and then after that you find they can help you find the sources okay how can we get there because most of most of the, the the parents you know like oh forget it, it's not gonna happen you know what do you just concentrate on school concentrate, concentrate on your study 
of course, they want you to get a great job, and it's nothing wrong with getting a great job, you know. But uh, business, like a business, is uh, again business not for everybody, and job is not for everybody. So if you have an idea that you want to do something, find your uh, talk to your parents, and they will talk. They will they will find sources for you guys. And college students, there's always you're gonna find people. And you're gonna always find people who is uh, who wants to uh, help you to succeed your dream and succeed your goal that you wanted to do. Now you know that I I this is what I love to do. I will I I, I don't charge any money. I don't charge any fees to for advice or help you out. And this is what my passion is. I love to help people with business minded and because that makes me really really motivated to do that and uh, you're going to find more people like me out there who wants to help you to uh, achieve your goal but like i said do not talk to you know your friends or uh, you know next door guy about your ideas because that could be the greatest the next great idea that you have Excellent. Thank you again, Max. It was wonderful to hear from you and, you know, very inspiring. I think the that common driver of just great customer service and making something better is so common among entrepreneurs. And it, it was really exciting to hear a little bit about your journey. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And then that was great having you having me here. And I, was, I enjoyed it. And uh, please uh, contact me if you have any questions. You guys, you want to talk to me about anything. I, I'm on Inklink. And you, you have my email address and you can have my personal phone number. You want to call, talk to me separately? Absolutely. I would love to. Excellent. So anyone that's viewing this at a later point, feel free to reach out to the New Hampshire High Tech Alliance and we'll be happy to connect you with Max uh, to go over your great ideas. So thank you. Have a great day.